So my girlfriends and I organized a, a Zoom call twice a week just to check in and to see how we were all doing with managing family relationships and all that kind of stuff. And in the beginning, a lot of gossip, a lot of talking about cooking, a lot of talking about, uh, you know, getting along with family members and roommates. And um, that was the first week. And in the second week, we started talking about um, people we knew who were getting sick and then dying. And uh, at the end of the second week, in our second check-in, there was this pause in our conversation, and it was, what is happening to Black people? This is before there was any data. There were no announcements. It was just, how could we, four people on this call, know so many people who were sick and dying? And then we had work calls. Every morning we have a digital tea time uh, on the job, and so we all call in and share stories. And that same, uh, that was last week. Last week, uh, people on the call started talking about kids, a 19-year-old, a 22-year-old dying, and how many um, you know, people within our immediate circle were sick and dying. And um, you know, one of my colleagues said, I, I know there are so many people who I love who have people they love who are dying. Um, and so for me, it, this um, sense of how structural violence, how the violence of society, how the inattention to human need and human suffering lands in the body has been very, very profound for me over the last two weeks. This sense of this, I believe that structural violence is actually a series of human agreements that we will not pay attention to a set of humans that aren't somehow as human as we are. I, um, you know, I've for years have been using the term social distance and it's meant something very different to me. It has meant this sense of, uh, of, um, the word isn't ostracization. What is the word? The word is, um, marginalization and, and holding at, a, at, at arm's length, the sense of estrangement, that's the word I'm looking for, estrangement that I've often felt that I'm, I encounter when I'm engaging with white people. It's not racism exactly, it's just a sense that maybe I'm so different that I'm not human in the way they are. And for me, that was my understanding and my use of the idea of social distance. Um, and so this new use of social distance is really for me kind of a mind twist because on the one hand, it is a gesture of caring. <laughs> it is an act of mutual responsibility. And on the other hand, for me, whenever I hear it, I also think about the social distance that is racialized in this country and that is resulting in all of the profound suffering in uh, African American and other minority communities. I was looking through the chats and somebody talked about structural love as an antidote to structural violence. And I just love that. Um, I don't know what it means, but I think um, it's worth thinking about how um, maybe as a start, we have a different set of agreements amongst ourselves um, that are about um, attentional uh, love, attentional focus, uh, compassion and empathy just as you know, holding ourselves in that as we walk around in the day. And um, 
um, yeah, visualizing um, our world as a kind of a shimmering net of agreements and commitments and emotions and and what if we could strengthen that through um, through just an intention to hold ourselves in love. It won't answer everything. <laughs> Still a lot of poverty and there's a lot of other things in the world to worry about, but just holding ourselves in that, I think is a really good place to start. <laughs>